Midnight Facts for Insomniac. <laughs> I just learned something. Oh, I'm having fun now. Or you could be a water sign, either a Cancer Pisces or, like me, a Scorpio, characterized by genius-level intelligence and extreme sexual potency. <laughs> I don't believe your face. Additionally, uh, Scorpios are known to possess an almost hypnotic level of charisma <laughs> and excellent credit, uh, uh. usually in the 800s. <laughs> Don't get too excited when I ask you this, Duncan, but uh, what's your sign? Okay. You can't start a sentence, don't get too excited. Come on, man, I'm more... Look at them nipples. Look at them. All right. I try not to. Yeah. <laughs> Liar. It's surprisingly less challenging than you would think. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to avoid looking at all your sensitive spots. Various bits. Most of the time. Yeah. Uh, I'm an Aquarius. You're an Aquarius. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what the stars have to say about your personality. This is the essence of Duncan McEwen, as determined by arbitrary groupings of hydrogen balls millions of miles away, delivered courtesy of the professional stargazers over at CoStarAstrology.com. This is not your horoscope, by mm. the way. Websites that claim to predict the future, that is just a whole extra level of facepalm. Uh-huh. That is... I don't get it. Like, there are 12 zodiac signs, so you're telling me that apparently one-twelfth of the population is always going to be experiencing the same life events during the same week? Yeah. 9% of the world's population is getting promoted today. Sure. <laughs> I have, however, always been interested in the zodiac as it relates to personality types. Mm. Because if you remember, we did an episode on personality testing, mm -hmm. and fundamentally, astrology is just another way of categorizing people by temperament. Right. And it's just as reliable and just as respectable. I'd say less even than eh, most of those. <laughs> I don't know. There were quite a few number of those tests That's that were fair. built by people who were just like, really? Well, really? some of them were borderline science. Mm. But yeah, in this case, instead of an IMFJ or whatever, you're a goat. Right. You're a fish. <laughs> you're a goat. <laughs> or if you were born in October, like me, late October, mm. then you have the personality of a bug, apparently. Scorpios <laughs> Which are. is, uh, it's uh, accurate. Okay. <laughs> Look, Chloe. We don't have to get personal scabby. here. <laughs> but ultimately, really, astrology is just no different than the Myers Briggs or the Enneagrams or the Big Five personality types. Mm -hmm. So let's get to it. This is Duncan encapsulated, and it is not up for debate. The stars have spoken. Mm. This is you. Oh, okay. Aquarius traits, purposefully esoteric. Doesn't do feelings, just concepts. Wait, I'm sorry. Purposely esoteric. Is that just another way of saying pretentious AF? Uh-huh. Okay, sweet. I was going to say, like, that first one. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm, it was on the nosy. On. Mm. Uh, actually believes in conspiracy theories. That's, mm, no. No. More in love with humanity as a whole than individuals. Oh, snap. Okay. It's like three out of four right now. Mm. Always feels like an outcast. I feel a tech. <laughs> <laughs> Fetishizes personal freedom. Kind of. Eh, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. That's pretty spot on, though. Yeah. Purposefully esoteric. That's my favorite. <laughs> Doesn't do feelings, just concepts. That's kind of you. What yeah. are you talking about? I'm hyper empathetic. Yeah. But I do have trouble, and, and this is why I wonder if I'm sometimes a little bit on the spectrum, because I do have trouble processing certain social emotional cues. Like, I oh, just I'm, don't get them. I'm aware. Shut We're up. all aware. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, there's a big old bowl full of suck it right in front of you. <laughs> the more in love with humanity as a whole than individuals, though. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we, how but many that's, times that's have we the said? reverse, though, because I'm, I'm misanthropic. So I am not in love with humans, oh, I but see. I'm really interested. Like, I actually like individuals, but as soon as you get into a crowd more than five or ten of you, you can all burn. I don't care. I guess so. I mean, I think I like the concept of humanity and I mm. struggle with individuals. Mm. But I think, yeah, groups of people are idiots and I don't like groups of people. Mm. But humanity as a whole, I do like, but there are a lot of humans that I'm not a fan of. Mm. Famous Aquarians, by the way, uh, Virginia Woolf, Frederick Douglass, Michael Jordan, Yoko Ono. That's good company there. This is a weird <laughs> mix. Wow. <laughs> About Aquarius. Aquarians are archetypical outcasts. This doesn't mean that they're loners. In fact, they thrive in large groups, charming you with their peculiar senses of humor, intriguing you with fun facts about the history of disposable straws. The alienation they feel is often self-imposed, a result of their knee-jerk contrarianism rather than a lack of social intelligence. This is, hmm, I don't, this is pretty you. They try to be weird. 
It says. You uh, kind of, I don't have to try. You I don't have a choice. That's, <laughs> you, I was born this way. You have made efforts to not be weird. <laughs> oh, dear and, God. Uh, over the years? Failed miserably. <laughs> yeah. They pretend to actually like noise music. They saturate their internal monologues with SAT words. <laughs> Who the fuck wrote <laughs> this? What bitter-ass grandma was like... <laughs> They like that noise music, man. This is a co-star astrology, which I actually like. It's, there's mm. a lot of tongue in cheek. They're very non-traditional, mm. low on pretense. Yeah, kind of. Well, mm, maybe not. Heavy on silly. Mm. Here's the important part. Yeah, uh, Aquarius in friendship. Mm. Aquarians make very good acquaintances. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm going to come off shitty in this? <laughs> they are friendly people, but their enigmatic nature makes them difficult to get close to. Aquarians are personality collectors. They tend to surround themselves with a curated cast of strange characters. That tracks. Yeah. But never get to know them beneath their surface level attributes. Mm, yeah. Bollocks. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like uh, reading through, there was a good amount of this stuff that applied to you. And then okay. probably, you know, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. Like it is with every astrology sign. Yeah. So obviously this week's topic is astrology mm -hmm. and I'm going to try really, really, really hard to not be a sarcastic jerk for the entire episode. You will fail. It will be tough <laughs> because this subject for me could easily turn into an hour long eye roll. Right. Astrology is not a science and more importantly, and this is just undeniable fact, the foundational principles of astrology directly conflict with science. Right. So it's not just that astrology doesn't qualify as a science. It is aggressively anti-scientific. Right. Isn't this based like a Terra centric? Isn't it based on Terra centric, not heliocentric learning? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was based on when we thought that everything revolved around the Earth. Yeah. Yeah. So astrology is like a mystical, nonsensical mashup of two different legitimate scientific disciplines mm -hmm. psychology and astronomy plus magic. Right. And there's obviously no real connection among any of those disciplines. And one of them doesn't even exist. You might as well try to determine someone's personality based on mashing together psychology with any other arbitrary science, like botany. Like, I don't think we'd be compatible. You were born way too close to a ficus. <laughs> I love the oh, word ficus. You do. It's, it's, ficus is just a fun word. Whenever I talk about a plant, just yeah. I, have, I need to come up with a plant, it's going to be a ficus. Of course. And I it, don't it, know what a ficus is. It, it's a tree-like shrub, and yeah. it, it's it's also this close to an expletive i feel as though if yeah. you just want to just you know you stub your toe and you don't want to be swearing in front of your parents ficus yeah god that hurt no that guy's a real ficus <laughs> dude ficus that guy so i promise we're gonna dive into the fun stuff as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. all of the zodiac symbols and constellations and the history of astrology this will not be an entire episode of cold water throwing uh, but we do have to get a little bit of debunking out of the way because modern astrologers try to cloak themselves in scientific jargon they will go out of their way to load up their websites and their Instagram and TikTok accounts with intricate diagrams and graphs, and they will tell you that they use specific data points to create your chart, implying that there's a mathematical foundation to their pronouncements and predictions. Mm -hmm. But astrologers have never provided any credible explanation of the celestial forces that they claim are somehow affecting our lives. Yeah. Uh, measurements? Graphs, really? Like what? Well, like, what are the mechanisms behind the influence of zodiac signs? Right. The only legitimate scientifically verified forces that could possibly be involved in this equation are gravity or electromagnetism. And according to Isaac Newton, and I guess, you know, physics, the gravity that an object exerts on another object, it's inversely proportional to the square of its distance. The nearest star to us is Proxima Centauri, around 25 trillion miles away, so your dog has more of a gravitational effect on you than any star in the sky, other than the sun. I mean, you've met the floof, duh. And as for electrical fields, household appliances exude more detectable electromagnetism than constellations. So you might as well create intricate charts explaining how your personality at birth was influenced by a chihuahua and a toaster. Yeah, I mean, call back to an earlier episode, one of mine, uh, the, the ghost episode. Your heart produces more of an electrical traceable electrical energy than friggin' Alpha Centauri or whatever. Well, your heart fuck. definitely has more of an impact on your quality of life than a constellation. Right. Yeah. Plus, here's something interesting. The Earth is not even in the same position at the same date and time every year. So it actually deviates up to 20,000 miles on each orbit. Mm -hmm. So no two babies would be born under the exact same cosmic conditions. Right. Hence making all of these various and very intricate definitions pointless. 
Exactly. The bottom line is that astrology is mystic occultism. It was created by primitive, confused humans who, as you mentioned, believed in a geocentric universe. They were convinced that the Earth was the center of the cosmos and the sun and moon and stars revolved around us. Also known as the toxic narcissist model of the universe. <laughs> Primitive humans misunderstood the relationship of the Earth to the rest of the cosmos, which makes it a little bit tough to believe that they could understand the relationship of the stars to a single human life. Mm. And keep in mind that star charts are based on the time and date that you were born. But birth is no longer a purely natural phenomenon. Maybe as a baby you were running late, and medical professionals decided to speed up the process by inducing labor. Or you might have been born by a cesarean. So apparently, according to astrologers, the doctor is ultimately the one who's responsible for crafting your personality by determining the moment of your birth. Right, yeah. <laughs> Some dude with a scalpel and a hangover was like, nah, today, I ain't got time for this shit. So when you think about this for more than a couple seconds, it just, it all falls apart. Like, approximately 250 humans are born every minute, which means that hundreds of children were born at the same moment as Jeffrey Dahmer. Mm -hmm. And yet none of them developed his unique snacking habits. His weird dietary requirements. <laughs> I personally know twins, and you know mm -hmm. a couple of them too, like, yeah. uh, who have completely different personalities. No, and and that's one of the first proofs, once we started doing twin studies, one of the first proofs we got, like, fully the final fuck nail pylon in the coffin of astrology was twin studies, where it's like, well, but these people are the exact same, down to damn near the genetics, especially identical twins, and they're nothing alike. So given all of astrology's obvious flaws, why would anyone believe that our destiny is written in the stars? Well, for one thing, astrology is attractive because it enforces order on the universe. Right. It creates predictability out of what can seem to be chaos. And it elevates our insignificant lives to the level of cosmic phenomena. It's incredibly comforting and also outrageously self-centered to believe that a bunch of balls of hydrogen and chunks of rock that are whipping through the heavens, going about their celestial business millions of miles from Earth, completely unaware of your existence, somehow determine your particular personality and can also predict your future. Yes, and also not sentient. <laughs> There's a lot of anthropomorphizing there, and they're like, unaware of your, <laughs> unaware of your existence. They're rocks, dude. <laughs> that's, that's my point, is yeah. like, they have no investment in you. No. They, they are incapable, even if they wanted to. Right. They are not a they. They, they can't even want to. Yeah. <laughs> In fact. <laughs> they can't even want to. In his 1869 book, Memoirs of Extraordinary Popular Delusions and the Madness of Crowds, Charles McKay writes, quote, How flattering to the pride of man to think that the stars in their courses watch over him and typify by their movements and aspects the joys or the sorrows that await him. He fondly imagines that eternal worlds were chiefly created to prognosticate his fate, unquote. Yep, that was definitely 1800s. I can tell by all the uh, $10 words in there. So at the same time, though, I find it interesting that somewhat paradoxically, these believers in astrology who imagine that they are like inextricably connected to the heavens, they're also essentially surrendering their agency and even their own individuality. Because... Think about it. Like, even though you were born at the same moment as billions of ants and rabbits and frogs and hundreds of other people, you were not destined to be the same as any of them. Mm. You were unique because of your DNA, and your personality is likewise shaped by your diverse life experiences. You're not a tool of the universe with no free will. You're a special version of you because your personality is determined by the proven science of genetics and the circumstances of your life by nature and nurture both. Right. So science and just simple logic tell us that astrology does not hold water. But you know what? Like the stories in the Bible, they also conflict with science. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously no point in recording an entire episode in which we lecture listeners about the unlikelihood of virgin births and ladies spontaneously morphing into salt. We're not going to spend any more time on this debunking. Because if you're a person who chooses to believe that the Earth is 6,000 years old or that your girlfriend dumped you because Mercury is in retrograde, two dudes on a podcast are not going to change your mind. No, in fact, I would say anything we say will simply enforce your belief furthermore because we did the whole thing. And, you know, there's that paradoxic, not paradoxic effect. It's the basically where telling someone they're wrong and enumerating the various reasons why only ingra like ingrains it and like entrenches them further in their belief. Right. They have to fight you now just to keep what they know to be true. Yeah, if you're invested, and a lot of people are really invested in this belief. I know, uh, you know, some coworkers and other people who are very into astrology, and you can explain to them uh, everything that we've just talked about and some more that will be revealed 
and they still will just say, yeah, but it works. And there is this idea that like, it doesn't matter how it works. They can just say it does work. Science hasn't figured it out yet. It's very similar to acupuncture. Uh -huh. We don't have a good explanation for why acupuncture works or any way that acupuncture actually would work. There's no scientific explanation you can give as to why sticking needles in people in certain places would help with like everything from aches and pains to sickness. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I feel like that's one of those arguments that you cannot disprove because we haven't figured it out yet. So what do you want me to say? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I was talking to a coworker about it, and I was just like, but there's no, what What do you think it is that makes this work? Like, how can you give me an explanation? She's like, it's not up to me to do that. I'm just saying, in my life, it has worked. And I'm like, well, I don't even know what working means in this context, but she finds it useful, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't really argue with that. And as it turns out, uh, plenty of people do believe. According to a poll by the General Social Survey, fully a third of Americans believe that astrology is, quote, very or sort of scientific, unquote. Oh, God. <laughs> Nothing screams credible science more than the vague area between very and sort of. Yeah. <laughs> it's a massive landmass of gray area between very and... <laughs> Yeah, if you're sick and you go to a doctor, that's what you. That's what I really want to hear. Mm. I'd say all of the available treatment options are sort of scientific. That would be singularly terrifying. <laughs> are you even a qualified medical professional? Yeah, how did you get in here? Yeah, I'd say I'm somewhere between very and sort of qualified. You're going to die. <laughs> yeah, <you're, laughs> this person snuck into this office and put on a white coat. I don't even know why they're there. So I will end this extremely long intro mm. by saying that from this moment forward, I'm going to try to use this episode as an opportunity to learn rather than mock. Okay. I actually find ancient mysticism very fascinating, and that's exactly what astrology is. It's the occult gone mainstream. Mm. And that's kind of an interesting phenomenon, that there is this completely witchcrafty nonsense that so many people read about in legitimate publications. Yeah, I mean, it would be like the New York Times publishing the, the top 10 best fortune cookies you <laughs> right. fucking opened in the last week. And this, this is going to be your future. Yeah. We support fortune cookies here. So one thing I was surprised to realize is that there was initially a reasonable and defensible basis for the belief that celestial bodies have a physical effect on the terrestrial realm. Mm. I guess I just hadn't really thought about it because it makes sense. Obviously, the sun provides life-giving energy and ancient civilizations were aware of the lunar effects on the tides. And they tracked how the movement of constellations corresponded with the changing seasons and temperatures on the planet. So it was not complete lunacy to believe that objects in the sky could have a tangible impact on the Earth. Right. Astrology extends back at least 3,000 years to Mesopotamia and the Babylonians. They noticed that some groups of stars would appear in the same place in the night sky around the same time every year. There was not a lot to do at night except <laughs> stare at the sky. And with zero electric lights and zero smog, just imagine how blazingly bright the stars would have been on a clear night by the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Yeah, I mean, that's probably one of the only things I would want to go back in time to do as evidenced by our After Midnight episodes. I don't have a lot of motivation, but I want to see what the sky and the sea and everything else looked like before we started dumping insane amounts of shit into it. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't really think about that. So humans mostly began mapping the sky after they associated these celestial bodies with natural phenomena. So like there's snow on the ground again, and that same group of stars is in the sky. And now it's 100 degrees out, and wouldn't you know it, that other group of stars is always visible when my balls are sweating. Like they, they, they associated natural phenomena to what was going on in their lives. I'm pretty sure the first couple drafts of the tomes for astrology involved ball sweat and goddamn it's cold. <laughs> you were born in the goddamn it's cold season. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you know, every time I collapse in a drunken heap during the fall festival or whatever, mm -hmm. it seems like I'm staring up at these same three stars and suddenly they look a lot like a couple of hot twin ladies. <laughs> Which, side note, you had to be high to oh, believe yeah. that any of these constellations look anything like the things that they are purported to look like. Yeah, I, I can't remember what the, the, the brain thing does. You know, like when we, you look at a, a series of like dots or lines and you your brain pastes sure, a like picture a, over it. It's like a cloud and you yeah. see the shape and, and all of a sudden it's a sheep. But right. this is like another level of that. Yeah, no, this has to be chemically induced because I've never once looked at a constellation and been like, totally, I see it. I was just like, nope. That's, yeah. It's what? I have a picture of them here for you. I mean, look at Aries. Th that is supposed to be... What, a, a goat? A ram? It's a line. It is a line. I would sooner call that the celestial hockey stick than I would Aries. <laughs> it is a slightly crooked line. Yeah. Cancer looks like 
uh, a dowsing rod. Um, so does Taurus. There's one that's just a, a triangle. Yeah. Capricorn is a triangle. I don't know where they, they really got creative with any kind of goat or ram situation. Yeah, that's damn near, a, that's damn near a boomerang. Yeah. These are feeble. Yeah. You have to possess an incredible imagination or some very powerful hallucinogens to decide that these shapes in any way resemble animals or anything other than scribble. It is sky scribble. <laughs> that's what this is. Sky scribble. I like it. I will post this in the Discord for anyone who hasn't seen this in a long time, just mm-hmm. to see what the, the bare bones constellations look like by themselves right. without, without all the embellishment. Yeah. It's flabbergasting that these people <laughs> try and fucking put that across. As, yeah, sure. Sure, bro. Uh, That's a ram. Anyway, so mapping the stars started as observational science, and at first it was relatively legit. Hmm. Observing correlations among phenomena, that makes sense. But of course, the problem is when you confuse correlation with causation. Right. Like, you know, that group of stars that we always see during the winter, well, that must be causing the snow. That's when it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. But at first, studying the constellations was very helpful for navigation and anticipating seasons, etc. In fact, to inhabitants of the ancient world, astronomy and astrology were synonymous. Right. Even pioneering astronomers like Johann Kepler and Galileo, they were astrologers as well. No doubt in part because they earned much of their income with astrological charts. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure the market for people looking for astronomically, you know, informed uh, uh, sea charts and so forth was far, far, far smaller than people who were just like, hey, I really like this chick in my office and I want to convince her that I should go home with her. How do I do that? Yeah, the uh, how to bang this thing I want to bang. There's always been a market for that, as we learned in the Manosphere yes. episodes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. going all the way back to post-tiquity. <laughs> post-tiquity. <laughs> However, not everyone in the Renaissance or even the ancient world was on board with astrology. Mm. Roman orator and intellectual Favorinus of Averlate, quote, argued that it was absurd to imagine that stars and planets would affect human bodies in the same way as they affect the tides, and equally absurd that small motions in the heavens cause large changes in people's fates, unquote. And of course, all the people to whom he explained this theory were like, nah, (laughs) magic is real. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> every single one of them blinked and then walked away. <laughs> so every major civilization has developed some version of astrology in the past and even integrated it into their governmental decision-making to various degrees. Hmm. For instance, in Mesoamerica, quote, on the fifth day after the birth of a boy, the Mayan astrologer priests would cast his horoscope to see what his profession was to be, soldier, priest, civil servant, or sacrificial victim, unquote. God damn. <laughs> you know, those parents were just whipping out their foresighted dialect. Come on, don't crap out. <laughs> that was considered a profession, sacrificial victim. It was very brief. <laughs> it, better, it wasn't a long training period. Better pay really well. And also in advance. Yeah. <laughs> I have so many questions. We're going to have to explore this more in future episodes. I'm curious about that. Absolutely. So you probably know that astrology has always been hugely popular in China. It was endorsed by Confucius and various royal dynasties. Mm -hmm. Astrology in China is inextricably linked to philosophy and includes concepts that haven't been absorbed into the Western version, such as the 12 earthly branches and the 10 celestial systems, etc. We're not going to go into those. Those are likewise for future episodes. So we're going to focus on the more familiar, to us at least, Western astrology. So let's talk about the 12 signs of the Western zodiac and how it all supposedly fits together. Here's a quick explanation from a NASA blog that achieved infamy in astrological circles for reasons that we will discuss later. Mm. Quote, imagine a straight line drawn from Earth through the sun and out into space way beyond our solar system where the stars are. Then picture the Earth following its orbit around the sun. This imaginary line would rotate, pointing to different stars throughout one complete trip around the sun or one year. All the stars that lie close to the imaginary flat disk that are swept out by this imaginary line, those are said to be in the zodiac. The constellations in the zodiac are simply the constellations that this imaginary straight line points to in its year-long journey. Right. Unquote. Basically, the line of sight. Sure. So you're imagining the Earth orbiting the sun with this straight line extending from its center, inscribing a circle as the Earth moves in its orbit, and now let's take that imaginary circle and we'll divide it into 12 slices, and those roughly correspond to the 12 months of the year. So each slice of sky represents a single zodiac sign. Mm -hmm. Now, typically when someone tells you their sign, they are referring to what's called a sun sign. The idea is that on the day you were born, that particular constellation was in the sky. 
For instance, on the day I was born, if you drew a straight line from the Earth through the Sun to the opposite side of the heavens, supposedly Scorpio was in the sky at that moment. And that's kind of weird because that means that you actually can't see your particular constellation in the sky on your birthday. Uh Because we can't see the stars on the other side of the Sun during the day. So it's kind of counterintuitive. So your Sun sign is invisible uh, during your birth time. And thus making even more sense because (laughs) that invisible thing that totally affects all of your life and will totally decide how you go about the rest of your days. Yeah. You can't see it. It makes it seem more scientific because at least it's like something that they had to intuit was there, even though they couldn't see it. Mm. So at least that means that they were able to like know what was up in the sky, except the problem is uh, they were wrong. And we'll get to that. I was going to (laughs) say. They were wrong most of the time. Yeah. We'll see. So the signs are also grouped into further categories, the elements. If you are an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, you are a fire sign. And some of your associated personality traits would be enthusiasm, decisive action, leadership, and adaptability. Or you might be an earth sign, which would mean you are a Taurus or a Virgo or Capricorn. Uh, Earth signs are supposedly practical and grounded. Or you could be a water sign, either a Cancer Pisces or like me, a Scorpio, Characterized by genius-level intelligence and extreme sexual potency. (laughs) I don't believe your face. Additionally, uh, Scorpios are known to possess an almost hypnotic level of charisma (laughs) and excellent credit, Uh. uh, usually in the 800s. From one of the more reputable uh, astrology sites, uh, Uh. you should always feel comfortable loaning a Scorpio money or investing in one of their various schemes. I mean, uh, entrepreneurial endeavors. Unquote. Uh. Send me money. <laughs> yeah. Send me <laughs> your money. Uh, no, that was uh, not the case. Uh, this is th- the truth. Uh, some of the defining characteristics of water signs are emotional sensitivity and compassion. <laughs> Which, yeah, not my strong suits. I, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> say that again. I just need to clear out the rest of this laughter. Compassion, maybe. Yeah. I, d- I feel compassion for like animals and a lot yeah. of other things. Just nothing else. If it, if it has a forebrain and, you know, cognition, you're like, eh, it, has to have it more, could die. More than two feet. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the other things I find completely bonkers about this is who is looking at a scorpion and going, water sign, definitely. Yeah. Well, you're an Aquarius, which, by the way, is an air sign. Yeah. Uh, aqua air? Okay. Yeah, okay, but So, speaking of which, finally, you might be an air sign, and these are Gemini, Libra, and, like you, Aquarius. Air signs are considered to be petty and judgmental. They make terrible friends and are often shunned by a polite society. I find nothing to argue with in this. <laughs> no, they are often intellectually oriented and uh, typically very logical. Is there? Yeah. Again, <laughs> a real good swing and a miss. I'm I not really, what? It's That's the, supposedly the truth. And uh. Uh, yeah, so I am a sensitive pussy and you are a rational robot. Mm. I think they switched our roles there. I think I should be a Scorpio. (laughs) So as if things weren't complicated enough, each element is also either a fixed, cardinal, or mutable sign. The cardinal signs are Aries, Libra, Capricorn, and Cancer. Fixed signs are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. And then the mutable signs are Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, and Pisces. There's a lot to chew on here, but basically you might say that the cardinal signs are like leadership type signs, like type A personalities. Mm. Fixed signs are steady and reliable and often stubborn. Mutable signs are more flexible and adaptable and often impressionable. Mm. So as a Scorpio, I am a fixed water sign. Sounds like I'm neutered. <laughs> you, were, you were neutered in a lake. I am also a feminine sign, so I I guess that kind of tracks. The signs are split by gender. The masculine signs are air and fire, while the water and earth signs are feminine. So I'm a fixed feminine water sign, and as an Aquarius, you are a fixed masculine air sign. Mm. We're both fixed. so We are both married, so it's the equivalent. Unix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's get even further into the weeds on this stuff. As we have mentioned, to craft an accurate astrological chart... An astrologer will need, at minimum, three pieces of data, your time, date, and place of birth. The birth time, or as one site nauseatingly referred to it, your angel number, supposedly (laughs) determines a person's so-called rising sign. Quote, the rising sign, also known as the ascendant, relates to the zodiac sign that rises on the eastern horizon at the time of our birth. The ascendant makes up the foundation of an individual's personality. Unquote. 
The other vital elements are the sun and the moon. So the sun sign, which is what most of us call our sign, represents the self, while the moon sign reflects your inner self. So you have the moon, which is your inner self, your personality, which is the rising sign, and then your self, which is the sun sign. I don't know. You were, you said self a lot there. I, <laughs> I kind of tuned out. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom line, like even though you're an Aquarius, you might have a Capricorn rising and your moon in Virgo. So maybe your personality skews toward Capricorn while your inner self tends to show Virgo characteristics. Mm. I don't know whether that's true for you. I did not do your chart. I'm winging it here, but you get the idea. I, I'm glad you didn't do my chart. I would have to worry and or medicate you. I did. I did consider asking your time of birth. I did my chart mm. and Jody's chart. Mm. By did, I mean put our information into a website. Okay, I was going to say, please <laughs> yeah, tell me, God, you did not Amazon some books to your house. <laughs> no, not yet. Okay. Uh, you know, you never know. No, I do. You don't know my life. <laughs> I might be sitting around. Uh, no, I'm not. You, <laughs> you couldn't even come up with a good lie. <laughs> you were like, I might do them. No, that sounds like yeah. a huge waste of time. <laughs> Additionally, there are planets associated with each particular sign. And of course, the planets represent different, like, things, I guess. They're not, they're not really traits. Just basically nouns. <laughs> like self, love, money, rebellion. Mars is passion. Mm -hmm. Jupiter is luck. Saturn is karma. Pluto is power. Uh, Mars and Pluto are the planets that rule Scorpio, by the way. So I am ruled by passion and power. BDSM. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> That's why I don't kink shame. Mm -mm. You, as an Aquarius, are ruled by Uranus. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so true. Ever since I came back from Africa, that thing never worked right. You were also ruled jointly by Saturn. Saturn and Uranus. But that was less funny <laughs> and scatological sounding, so I, so I didn't mention the Saturn part. It yeah. Totally makes sense. We're both five. It totally makes sense. Uranus and Saturn represent rebellion and karma, respectively. Mm. So from what I gather, you will rebel and you will be punished. Every time. That actually tracks. Consid Again. Considering your employment history. I yeah. <laughs> Fired all those times. You might also have heard talk of houses in astrology. We've mentioned them a couple times. When you receive a birth chart known as a natal chart... It will generally include a graph that lists the 12 so-called houses, which represent different aspects of your life, and you'll be able to find out which planets are in each of those particular houses. It's supposed to be large houses. Planetoid size. Wh which house is the Fwangian house? I, I, want, I want man house <laughs> to show up. <laughs> That's a long callback. Yeah. The first house is the house of self. The second is the house of possessions. The third is the house of communication. The uh, fourth is family and home, etc. Mm -hmm. The eighth house, that's a good one. That is the house of sex. Mm. It's, it's like the house of the rising sun. I wonder if that's where that, because that was a whorehouse, right? Mm. The house of sex. Was there an astrology tie-in with that song? Uh, I, th I think you're reaching, but this I is, don't... This is how astrology happens. Yeah. <laughs> this is people reaching for bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> There's a connection here somehow. <laughs> The house of sex. That is, that's the fourth house that the little piggies made. Yeah. <laughs> they, there was the house of straw. There was the house of brick. There was the house of sex. It didn't stop the wolf, but it, it was, it was it distracted a distraction. the ever living fuck out of that <laughs> yeah. wolf for a while. So the planets that reside in each of your houses help you understand how your personality relates to that particular subject. So for instance, the first house, the house of self, according to astrology.com, indicates, quote, who are you? What will you become? How do you realize your best self? The first house speaks to the realization of one's ultimate potential, unquote. So if you want to know who you are and what you will become, you can get a natal chart done and you take a look at your first house. For instance, I had a chart done and uh, Saturn is in my eighth house. So in my sex house is karma. <laughs> Again, accurate. <laughs> I just, I think that means I'll get all the sex that I deserve, which is probably, probably not much. <laughs> I used up all my, my sex uh, that's, <laughs> I was like, I don't feel like I can respond here and have it be nice. <laughs> so anyway, this is why each chart gets so in-depth and elaborate, because mm. there are tons of different layers and traits and modifiers for each sign based on your specific you know, birth scenario. Mm. For instance, I had my chart done. As I mentioned, I am not just a Scorpio. I am a Scorpio with Sagittarius rising, and my moon is in Leo. Except not really. I'll explain later. <laughs> okay. I mentioned I did not do a chart for you, so I don't uh, know your specifics, but I'm, I'm guessing that your eighth house, sex, is also in Uranus. <laughs> Just, you know, throwing that out there. Just 
grinding that point home. (laughs) (laughs) So I promised we were done with skepticism in this episode, but I cannot resist a final debunking. I mentioned a notorious blog. Uh, NASA caused an uproar among astrology enthusiasts in 2016 when the organization pointed out that I'm not actually a Scorpio. Mm -hmm. Well, not just me, of course. Quote, according to the Babylonians' own ancient stories, there were 13 constellations in the Zodiac. So they picked one, a Fucus, to leave out. Even then, some of the chosen 12 didn't fit neatly into their assigned slice of the pie and crossed over into the next one. The constellations are different sizes and shapes, so the sun spends different lengths of time lined up with each one. Mm. The line from Earth through the sun points to Virgo for 45 days, but it points to Scorpius for only seven days. To make a tidy match with their 12-month calendar, the Babylonians ignored the fact that the sun actually moves through 13 constellations, not 12. Then they assigned each of those 12 constellations equal amounts of time, unquote. And Time Magazine explains the bottom line here, quote, Anyone born between November 29th and December 17th would no longer be a Scorpio or a Sagittarius, but an Ophiuchus. Scorpio's window would be cut to just seven days, and the entire astrology chart would shift, meaning some Pisces and Leos and Libras would have different star signs, unquote. So, Ophiuchus, this guy, who's sitting before me, who says he's a Scorpion, he is a nut. I'm an Ophiuchus. I don't like it. I like Scorpio I not it. that much, but I don't want to be in a fucus. No, I want you to be in a fucus for the rest of your life. <laughs> sounds like a dog sneezing. <laughs> so I see why you're not bothered by this. It doesn't affect you, Mr. Aqua Air Sign. I am Aquanet. But everything we just learned about me is objectively a bunch of horse shit. <laughs> I mean, you know, all of everything we just learned is, but I only care about the portion that affects me. Yes, of course. <laughs> why would you care about the rest of it? We are not quite done here. Uh, I have to admit, all of this was actually kind of fun for me to research. This is one of those subjects that I never would have looked into without the insomniacs. And I actually enjoyed it. It was fun for me and Jody to read about our supposed traits and compatibilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, We got some good laughs, and some of it seemed very accurate, and some of it was just clearly bonkers. This stuff can be super entertaining if you don't take it too seriously. And uh, maybe you can even get something useful out of it. But the problem is that certain people take it too far. So historically, there are numerous world leaders who have made consequential decisions based on astrology. Mm -hmm. Nancy Reagan, wife of President Ronald Reagan, famously kept an astrologist on staff named Joan Quigley. And it was a giant scandal in 1988 when the word got out. According to Quigley's memoir, she determined the scheduling of everything from important meetings to Reagan's State of the Union addresses based on astrological charts. Which is why it was mentioned in Stranger in a Strange Land... Because that was a huge, big deal. I feel like Stranger in a Strange Land was written before the 80s. Was it? I I would be willing to bet. Let's look it up real quick. Okay. A 1961 science fiction novel. Fuck. So he just called that shit. Is that in the book? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. His his wife only meets with the group Hmm. because they're friends with the astrologer. Uh, Well, it makes sense because I'm just bringing this one up, but there are a lot of instances in history where unfortunately rulers have had you know astrological advisors and things i mean i I made major decisions in my life based off of coin tosses throughout my life when i was a teenager so fuck it luckily they were only consequential to you because you had zero power Mm -hmm. and that's that's the point is that like it's totally fine when you're deciding whether you might be compatible with your tinder date or whatever but when like important decisions with global consequences are being made based on ancient mystical silliness that's when it gets scary Mm. Mars is in the sex house. Looks like we're going to have to bomb Canada. (laughs) That does sound like a Mars is in the sex house decision. It just absolutely does. Blame Canada. Everyone, Mercury's always in retrograde. That's always what people are blaming stuff on. Yeah. And I should probably explain that before we go. So Mercury in retrograde is just a visual trick, basically. Like, imagine if you were in a car and you're both going forward. There's other cars that are going forward the same direction as you, but one is going a little bit slower, and so it looks like they're going backwards. It's basically just a trick of optics. Mm -hmm. And that is Mercury being in retrograde, and apparently when that happens, the world just goes to shit. (laughs) Because of visual bullshit, all things suck. Yeah, well, that's a good encapsulation of how astrology works. And again, I I promised I wouldn't spend the rest of the episode debunking and... and, and Sneering. And sneering, Mm. but uh, that's the fun part for me. So I couldn't do it. And we lies. (laughs) We lies many times. We uh, we attempts (laughs) and we fails (laughs) is what happens. And uh, that's all I got. Nice. We do, however, have a new maniac 
Get in. Meet Christina Roy. Hello, Christina. That is the highest tier in our uh, Patreon. So that's awesome. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. And then we also have a new menace. Meet uh, Phase 10 Demon. Phase 10 Demon. You know, see, I like the Phase 10s. <laughs> the Phase 8s is when it gets a little weird. I like all the phases of Demon. Mm. Those are... It's it's like uh, it's very astrological. It's like the phases of the moon, except yeah. this is the phases of demons. It's just a phase. Uranus is in the tenth phase of demon. <laughs> it's Taco Bell, man. Every time. <laughs> and we have a couple of reviews. Get in. That Let's I see. Get to this week. This one is five stars. It says the upside of insomnia. Simply my favorite podcast of all time. I've shared with many family and friends. And we all eagerly await new episodes. A great balance of banter and facts that leave you both laughing and questioning everything you thought you knew. Please keep them coming. And that's from Coffee Bunny via Apple Podcasts in Canada. I love your name, Coffee Bunny. That's really funny. I'm just picturing a, a thoroughly twitchy bunny. That's as most of them are. I kind of assume that all bunnies are caffeinated. <laughs> we need to sedate more bunnies. Yeah. It should be like... Less coffee, more chamomile. Weed bunny. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Give some reefer to your local little hair. Don't actually do that. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, another review, Learning with Laughs, five stars. Love this podcast. I've learned so much whilst laughing loads along the way. I drive a lot for my job, and I would rather listen to this podcast on my long drives than music. And I feel you. I actually, I do podcasts now a lot more than music. Yeah. That is British Holmes, H-O-L-M-E-S, like Sherlock, via Apple Podcasts from, you guessed it, Great Britain. Nice. Thus, I assume, British Homes, that, that would that that would make sense. Which is also kind of redundant because there was no American homes. No, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. true. Your name is stupid. No, <laughs> God, Jesus. <laughs> and that's it. All right, so go to the Patreon. You just heard the name of two people who were like, "Eh, latte," or help this great podcast do more great podcast things. We like that one better. You don't need that much caffeine, as you heard from Shane. Weed is the better route. Just. <laughs> Weed, no coffee. Um, so I'm is sure that the what we're putting out of the, the world? That's the takeaway. Yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> it's from two people who don't smoke weed. Yeah, neither, and I don't drink coffee. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> so, take it with a salt lick. <laughs> I, I, that's yeah. what you should do. Is I love salt. Oh my god, salt and vinegar. Mm. Uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> anyway, uh, send send Shane some pictures of salt and vinegar chips over Instagram and come play with us on the discord. Uh, we've been getting a lot of new folks on the discord and it's great to see, great to hear you guys showing up and, and just, you know, a couple of you guys are, are sort of in the upper age brackets and we're totally happy to open our arms and explain discord to you. And you know, you are welcome. You are home. Uh, and otherwise, and forever after knowledge is power. Sleep is overrated. 